Queen Elizabeth II isn't too happy with new Duchess Meghan Markle following a plant-based diet. It was claimed she constantly pushes the boundaries of the royals and isn't too well received. But I find this pretty hard to believe. It was also noted that Prince Harry himself was opting for less meat and more fruit and vegetables, deeming it a healthier lifestyle. Someone who worked in the palace reported that Meghan wanted to raise the baby as a vegan. I mean, this would explain the tension, but as I said, I, I'm not buying this completely. These people know the importance of animal foods. The queen wouldn't be 92 years old if that was the case. On one hand, in a fantasy land where this is true and she was going to raise a baby vegan and we're believing everything they're saying, it would actually end up showing firsthand how detrimental a vegan diet is to a child. And this would be incredibly important because it's an unavoidable spotlight. The royal family, if they actually decided to raise a baby as a vegan, that might be essentially the collapse of the vegan diet as we know it. Overall, this is a bit confusing because Meghan Markle claims to eat vegan during the week, aka plant-based, plant-based. Uh, then she's flexible on the weekends. Uh, then she goes to say that she doesn't wear fur and painted her baby nursery with vegan paint. <laughs> I don't know why. I, I, I got to start selling vegan paint. It just sounds so funny to me. Uh, to, to me, none of this makes sense. But one thing's for sure, and that is how strongly a vegan diet is being pushed in the media, especially Hollywood. Have you ever looked up how many celebrities are vegan? It's a laundry list. Completely crazy. Natalie Portman, Liam Hemsworth, Woody Harrelson, Joaquin Phoenix, Jared Leto, Ellen Page, Russell Brand. What is going on? Are there any celebrities that aren't vegan? One of the craziest things to me in this whole vegan movement is that some of them have the nerve to say that there's a beef, milk, or dairy industry funding things. Oh, big egg, big dairy, big beef is funding this study that says cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease. It's, it's completely crazy. Yeah, every single media outlet still demonizes animal products, saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease. Every single media outlet says that, yet, oh, the vegans are being oppressed. The vegan agenda is clearly being fought against. How delusional can these people be? I've never seen a vegan acknowledge this, let alone admit how much bias there is in first world culture. They're using all the, you know, the conventional wisdom, what we've been told our whole lives. Fruits and vegetables are good for you. Cholesterol and saturated fat are bad. That's literally what the government's been peddling for like 50 years. And the vegans still claim, oh, victim, appeal to authority. I, I'm, it, it's completely wacko daco. But speaking of crazy vegans, I found an article uh, from this website a couple years back, uh, going over a few basic things. You know, saturated fat and cholesterol clog your arteries, meat gives you diabetes, and this person even had the nerve to reference Dr. McDougal, citing his quote from a book about how meat and fat are rich food, which would make you fat and unhealthy, like the kings and queens of old. Of course, her conclusion was that peasants were primarily vegetarian and were much healthier. I think this is a little silly considering Dr. John McDougall has recently lost his mind after being on a vegan diet for the majority of his life. And this is a completely ridiculous claim if you understood agriculture. Vegans lie and they're good at it, not because they're smart, because the lies the vegans are pushing are what we've been lied to about our whole lives, and they fall in line with authority, government, doctors, everything. Any precious land these peasants had was not used to grow vegetables. It was used to raise animals. Peasant diets were actually fairly high in animal foods compared to now because of their dairy consumption. They tended to keep cattle, uh, so lots of buttermilk, cheese curds, and whey. Uh, grains were unfortunately the main source of calories and energy they had available, but if a peasant consumed a high enough percentage of animal foods, I would say above 60% or so, 
they would actually be close to some indigenous and native people that were in perfect health, as demonstrated by the Swiss uh, on the Lochental Valley in Weston Price's book. Uh, Weston Price was a dentist who went around in the early 1900s. He inspected the health of people that still lived off the land. Now, once we actually look at the diets of these people and you say, oh, why were peasants healthy and the kings and queens unhealthy? It's actually really clear. These peasants were consuming almost indigenous diets, tribal diets, native diets, by consuming a high proportion of animal foods and likely properly prepared grains. And you can be perfectly healthy eating only cheese and rye bread as those indigenous Swiss people did. Now, the kings and the queens had access to two things, sugar and refined carbohydrates. If both peasants and kings and queens had access to the same foods and the one outlying factor was sugar and refined food, Everyone knows vegans have an agenda. They lie about things, but the meat causing diabetes, the demonizing of meat, ignoring that refined carbohydrates and sugar and carbohydrate consumption in general is a problem is a huge red flag. And hey, maybe it's not a problem for everyone, but for vegans to say that it's okay to consume as much sugar from fruits, as much carbohydrates from grains, legumes, etc., as you want, it's, I think... A major cogwheel in their movement that a wrench can be thrown in real quick. And we've never had fruits and vegetables until recently. Refrigeration and seasonal availability is so important to keep in mind. Uh, these peasants might have had fruit and vegetables infrequently in small amounts throughout the year, but it would be generous to say that more than 5% of their calories came from fruits and vegetables. Grains and animal foods are available at all times of the year. Grains are seeds and they can be stored away very easily. And cows can be fed hay or silage, uh, which is just fermented grass. But my point overall is that vegans skew and misinterpret every single thing to fall in line with their moral and ethical or whatever beliefs they have to push a vegan diet. And saying it's healthy is comical. They're literally saying, oh, these people are healthy because they followed a vegetarian diet, but they weren't vegetarian. It shows how out of touch with reality they are to ignore the blatant evidence of something as simple like this, where rich people had sugar and refined carbohydrates that no one else had. Increasing plant food consumption has taken a huge toll on humans. In my video, What Makes Us Beautiful, that I did several days ago, I spoke about the importance of vitamins from animal foods in development. Reducing meat consumption creates a weak, lower intellect group of people. In addition to that, we're uglier, we're shorter, we're not happy, we suffer from all of these health issues. We don't have to look at these anecdotal examples or historical evidence. On paper, plant foods do not contain vitamins that are specific to animal foods. If you guys would like to understand more about this, I will link a video towards the end here explaining the main nutrients lacking on a vegan diet. It's so unfortunate and, and crazy to think that the situation I'm in every day, you know, working several jobs to make a living, trying to become successful to help spread my message of these animal foods, and as simply put, make everyone beautiful, happy, and smart to ultimately make the world a better place. But when I think about the lies and the messages being spread in general, how hard it is to convince people of the importance of animal foods, everyone's general state of health and thought process, how many people are against me, all the negativity I have to deal with, I feel like I'm climbing a mountain. And once I reach the top, I look up and there's another mountain to climb. And then I reach the top of that one and there's another one. And as I've said, guys, in just about every single vegan-oriented video, we don't have to technically fight against the vegan movement. It will collapse on itself after people follow it and realize they go infertile and their health declines. But people aren't oblivious to everything around them. There are people that go on a vegan diet and believe in it and will take it to the grave. Unfortunately, you know, seeing Dr. John McDougall in such a state of dementia and who knows if animal foods could have helped him or not, this is an example of someone who will stick to his beliefs regardless of what happens to them. And this is what we have to prevent. We have to educate people on the importance of animal foods, that a vegan diet is not good, it's not healthy, it's not better for the environment, it's not better from a moral or ethical standpoint. 
So thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and share the video. If you guys would like to support me and my message, check out the Kickstarter I just started. You can pre-order high-quality grass-fed meat and various animal products. A bunch of exciting things in the future for Frankie's free-range meat. Definitely check that out, guys. Outside of that, there's a bunch of other things you can check out in the comments as well. If you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, shoot me an email, frankatufano at gmail.com. I help people improve the overall nutrient density of their life and optimize all aspects of physical health that they can do on a day-to-day -day basis. You guys, enjoy the rest of your week.